We bring in the NBA commissioner, Adam Silver. Last time you were on, I thought we solved a lot of problems with the NBA. I still have some things that maybe we could solve, but we'll talk about those uh, coming up. We had Jeff Van Gundy on yesterday. He said, let's do away with halftime, uh, offensive goaltending, and maybe free throws. Do you want to respond to any of those things that Jeff Van Gundy, one of your voices of your sport? I actually listened to that interview with, with Jeff, and I, I think even he acknowledged he was having fun. Um, you know, it's interesting on halftime when we've looked to shorten it a bit because we I think, you know, we changed the format in the last two minutes a couple of years ago to speed the game along. And I think we forget sometimes that the guys really do need the break. I mean, put aside the programming at halftime, the commercials, but it, it maybe you could shorten it slightly, but I think it is meaningful to the players in addition to the coaching that goes on at halftime, the opportunity to get a breather. You know, it's by the way, I remember, you know, Rod Thornwell, Rod, who used to work at the league office with me, telling me that when he was a player, that was an opportunity to have a smoke and a cup of coffee. <laughs> what do you think about offensive goaltending that we do away with once it's on the rim? It's, it's European style. Right, the FIBA rule. That's what we do in the Olympics and in the, the Basketball World Cup. I, I think it's an, it's an exciting play. You know, we've looked at it. We've experimented with it. Um, you know, in, in fact, we have a competition committee meeting this afternoon. And uh, it's, it's come up over time. It, I think around some of the uh, Olympics, it's been a, there's been a more serious conversation about it. But it, for whatever reason, people haven't been talking about it a lot lately. What about the All-Star Game? Uh, you talked about this yesterday. Maybe the international stars against the American stars. Is, is that uh, something that could happen as early as next year? It, 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 not as early as next year. We're going to be in Indianapolis. Uh, one of the things we're looking at for next year is returning to the East First West format, the more traditional format. I mean, we definitely need to do something. I mean, to, to spruce it up a bit. It's, uh, you know, I think all the leagues have dealt with issues around All-Star. I know when, when I was a kid, when you turn into an All-Star game, it was an opportunity to see players you never otherwise saw, you know, and literally to see them next to each other in their uniforms because I grew up in New York. You, you know, I was a big baseball fan. You just didn't see players that often, you know, from, from other teams. I think now with League Pass, digital media, they're so familiar to players that um, it's – there's just something lacking, and I think we need to find a way to create some real competition. And again, an idea that's come up in the past doing, you know, the Ryder Cup style, except not just U.S. versus Europe, U.S. versus the world. And one of the reasons we hadn't done that historically was there's an imbalance because even as the number of international players grow, it's still far less than, than half. But I think to me, as, as we look to make it more engaging for fans, that shouldn't be the sole reason we don't do it. I think we could add additional all-stars there's something we could do if, if and, and that's one of the things we're going to talk about today because again we, we do need to do something to make it more interesting i was wondering about this i brought it up with jeff van gundy where we see flopping and what if it was called and the punishment was you got the letter f on your jersey and and you you know it's like the scarlet letter and the scarlet letter is f for flopping like a buckeye for ohio state football yeah, you know, that the issue, one of the, uh, the serious things we're discussing is possibly adding a technical for flopping, which they do in international basketball. College added a, a, a flopping technical just this past season. Of course, the issue, one of the reasons we haven't done it historically is because by definition, they're fooling the referees. And we had an after the game remedy, which was a fine. But frankly, if you're successful in fooling the referees, a relatively small fine isn't going to make a difference. You may even be celebrated for having done it. So I, I think we do need, putting aside the scarlet letter, We, I, I'm in favor of adding a technical because even though it'll be a difficult call, there is replay on certain places. So you might catch it after the fact. And I think there has to be a, a greater disincentive for doing it. And, that it. and there has to be a competitive risk to flopping. As the commissioner, how much influence do you have over your TV partners you know, you got the Joker, who now people are seeing. They're almost forced to see him because he's in the NBA Finals. But to market some of these players, you know, Joker's a hard guy to market. He's not a highlight guy. But what influence can you have over the TV partners of 
let's can we focus in on some of these other players that maybe you know the rest of the country doesn't focus on you know how quickly you forget when you were at sports center calls from me when i was running nba entertainment to see, <laughs> why aren't you running more highlights or fill in the blank so i so we've we have some influence it's interesting i mean to the the networks i mean they do focus on the teams and players that they think are going to be most popular um, in fairness to them, the Joker hasn't been in the finals before. Of course, he's a two-time MVP. But we're seeing now, I think I, I read the other day, he went from the 18th most popular player on social media to the number one player on social media over the last two weeks. So fans are responding. The networks will respond. I, I, I mean, I, I've been at the, the, the first three finals games. I mean, it's, it's an incredible you know, display of basketball. I know, you know, you're a former player, a huge fan, uh, you know, and I, and I think the country is warming up to it. I mean, the team style that, that they play Miami too, for that matter. I mean, this is just from a, from a basketball aficionado standpoint, I mean, this is, this is really, you know, basketball playing at its highest level. And I think, and, and the, by the way, we're seeing it in the ratings. I think, you know, going in the projections were that we were going to be down almost 25% from Boston and San Francisco. And of course that hasn't been the case. In fact, you know, probably after last night, we're going to be up a little bit, which is says a lot about the league that you have two mid-sized markets. Of course, you know, a popular team in Miami, um, a, a, a Nuggets team that has never been in the finals and, and the fans are responding by watching. Yeah, they're two likable teams. We're talking to the commissioner of the NBA, Adam Silver. What was your reaction to the uh, Live Tour PGA Tour news? You know, I, I don't know enough from, about what really went on there on the inside. I guess I'm not so surprised given that there was a lawsuit, ongoing lawsuit and investigation, and the fact that they were, I think, hurting the golfers at the end of the day. I mean, they were turning golfers against each other. Again, this is just me from a fan's perspective and a fan uh, of the sport. I, I'd all say that – I. It, Golf, just like basketball, is extremely global. Um, there's there's interest around the world. I think that, you know, I was listening to some of the prior comments on your show, and I, I hear what people are saying about Saudi Arabia. On the other hand, and this is for, you know, good and bad, that when the Saudis invest in sports, it gets outsized attention. Now, I don't want to complain about that because we want to get outsized attention. On the other hand, Somebody could go down the list there. They are investors in some of our largest American corporations. Um, some of the most well-known brands have investments from them. And I also think it's a, it's a two-edged sword. I, I, I hear the comments about sport washing. On the other hand, um, you're talking about it. Others are talking about it. It's not as if some errant golfer can say one thing about his reaction to Saudi Arabia investing in golf, and that's left at that. I think people are pretty sophisticated. And the same way um, the World Cup, the football World Cup, soccer World Cup brought enormous attention to Qatar. I think people learn about these countries, learn about what's happening in the world in, other, in ways they otherwise wouldn't. So I think the media does its job. Um, but, but at the end of the day, I also think, and now talking specifically about the NBA, where we're such a global sport, I, it, I think people are a little too dismissive these days about the benefits that come from the commonality around sports that with a sport like basketball our, our finals are distributed virtually everywhere in the world the, the sport is played everywhere in the world it's an opportunity to bring people together i mean look at we're talking about you know Jokic from you know uh, uh, serbia you know we we have over 25 percent of our players now were born outside of the united states i i just think that they're the, it, it's the media does its job. But um, I had, people, has South have the Saudis looked to invest or buy an NBA team? No. What would Not you, that I'm aware of. I mean, they that, that they certainly haven't come to the league office. And under our rules, um, you an individual can only buy an NBA team right now. You can um, a fund, and that's what's happening here. Okay. It's, a, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's called a sovereign wealth fund that's investing in the in the PGA Tour, but. We allow funds to invest in teams, but not control teams, not to have influence over teams. So to, 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 to own an NBA team, there has to be an individual with a certain percent of the team to control it. Is the John Morant investigation over? We're just waiting for the finals to be over to announce the decision? The latter. We are waiting for the finals to be over. Um, 
I'm aware, of course, of these reports on social media about you know whether the gun was in fact a gun, uh, and so we haven't completely wrapped it up. Does that the, matter, the honest, Commissioner? If that's a toy gun, you know, it's it's interesting. It, it's the very issue is for Ja certainly in the first incident was treating a gun as a toy. I mean, that's what we're talking about. And that's what I think the danger is to society, taking a gun, live streaming it, uh, you know, this is with, without getting into gun issues in terms of the propriety of owning guns and the use of guns. I think everyone agrees that gun safety is critically important and that guns aren't toys. So it, it's, it, it's something that I'm thinking a lot about because, again, I'm not, I'm not going to get into the specifics of the investigation, but in fact, if you are live streaming something that to the world looks exactly like a gun and and in, in a frankly reckless manner, should it matter whether or not it's a real gun? I mean, I, you know, I, I will say at the end of the day, I, in terms of doing my job, everything that's presented to us is relevant. Past conduct is relevant. Um, the, the circumstances in which you're, you're doing whatever the act is becomes relevant. And in this case, you know, obviously we're, we're going to take into account whatever's presented to us. When we heard from you after what happened with Jaw this second time around, it's almost like there was disappointment, like you were let down by Jaw Moran. Is that a fair assessment? It, it is. I, and, and Joe Dumars, who now runs basketball operations to the league, and I have talked a lot about it because we were both in the meeting with him. Um, the head of the Players Association, Tamika Tremalio, was in the meeting with us. And just honestly, my sense was he was very sincere in how contrite he was, in how serious he was taking the issue. Again, now talking about the first incident where there's no fact in dispute. He was holding a gun, you know, inebriated in a club, waving it, live streaming it. So the, no, that's the, that's the, the first go round. And I, I know Ja a bit, I, I had known him, I, he's a star in our league. And the sense was he came in, he fully owned it, was saying, I made a terrible mistake, I learned from the mistake. And so then to get the report and then to see online that in fact, he was then live streaming a gun, certainly looks like a gun, a Glock, you know, in, in a kind of reckless manner. Sure, you know, I was incredibly disappointed. What would be a big suspension? I, I'm not going to get into a precise number of games, but um, I, I will only say in response to people who say eight wasn't enough the first time around, it felt like a pretty severe punishment at the time, an, an eight-game uh, suspension, of course, without pay. Um, and so I, I will say, you know, I, and, and I said this before, in terms of impacting his behavior, would 12 games have made a difference the first time, 15 games? I really don't know. I also, the older I get, I, I realize that I can't control other people and that he has to own his own conduct. And regardless of the number of games he had been suspended for first time around, he owns this, not me. And he has to take responsibility for it. And part of this, you know, it's, it's fine for somebody to come in and take respons responsibility for their action. And I'll even give him the benefit of the doubt that he was sincere. He's now made this mistake again. And I think one of the things we even talked about then is nobody's naive in the league office, certainly not Joe Dumars, been at this a long time, was, you know, we'll see your, as you go back out into the world how you choose to comport yourself. And, and so now here we are again um, dealing with an issue around Ja. And I, I also think it's important to point out that it, it, this is not – about just discipline and then we'll just cross our fingers and then hope there's not a third time. I recognize that he needs um, some assistance, you know, from the league office, his union, uh, his team. Um, he's no doubt he's a remarkable player. And, and, and I think he's a very engaging young man. It's one of the reasons he has this enormous following on social media, but it's a two-edged sword. And he has to own that and take responsibility for it. And my, my hope is that wherever we come out in terms of discipline, that there's a, 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 an acceptance that we need to 
find ways to engage with each other going forward to, to so he can change the trajectory he's now on, which is not a positive one. And I wondered about that, Commissioner, that I was worried about him over the summer. Now we've had this second incident. And also, if you suspend somebody for 20 or 30 or 40 games, what happens to that person when they have all that free time? And you could be adding to the, the issue with John Morant, not subtracting. Precisely, yeah, precisely. And I'm worried about that, too. And so, again, putting aside the number of games that um, we may be looking at, I'd like to come up with a program and, frankly, working with him um, in which there is a, a joint sense, a, a mutual commitment that um, we need to put together a program, um, not something that's, you know, a couple of sessions and I'm back, but, but something that um, where he will be able to use time away from the game. Look, he's suspended right now. I mean, he's away. He, I mean, it's, it's the off season, but he's suspended from team activities and, and, and there, I want to find a way where, frankly, you know, he's not being kicked to the curb, but basketball will take a back seat. And first and foremost, we're going to focus on him as a young man developing as, as a better person, as someone who's more responsible, particularly when it comes to guns. I mean, this is a really serious issue. All right. Next time you're on, we got to once again, I got to address carrying. OK, just. We, we, got, we have to address this, and maybe you could bring it up. Maybe just you and me. We just sit down and we discuss, get, get everybody out. I don't need a committee. What do you think? We did talk about this last time I was oh, on. Oh, I know, I know, I know. It's, it's an issue. It's, it's, um, I hear you. It's, it, it's a hard call, and uh, I hear it from fans when I'm in, I'm in the stands. And next time, why don't I come on with Joe Dumars, my, our, our basketball expert, and let's talk about it. Because, I, I, you know, in, in all seriousness, I, you know, we are the most played team sport in America. And so people can relate to it when they watch the game. And they, and they you know, whether it's, you know, caring, palming, traveling, whatever it is, people have a sense. And, and one thing that frustrates me in terms of the rules that, and as I said, I got a competition committee meeting this afternoon that when it's explained to me by the officials and Monty McCutcheon, who, who oversees our officiating staff, it quickly becomes very technical. And I think we need to find a way with our rules that they can be presented in a simple way. And while everything can't be so bright line, but there's a better sense like, yes, that's traveling or no, it's not. And, 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 and that's something I, I think we can we should be able to do a better job with. Did you just invite me to the committee? I mean, I, unless because it's a yes. If you want me involved in this, I'd be more than happy. The yes. All right, there you go. That's official. Is there a, like a, a handshake or a jacket or blazer that I wear, an ID card, whatever I need to be on that committee? You let me know. I will. I will. By the way, I was. <laughs> So I, when I was in Denver the other day, I think, you know, traveling, jumping time zones and things, it was late at night. I was just flipping around the television and I watched Blended. What'd you think? I thought it was a pretty good movie. I, you know, I know you've done a bunch of those Adam Sandler movies. I hadn't seen it before. It's a few years old, but uh, I, I enjoyed it. I'm an actor who does sports radio on the side, Commissioner. But you didn't play yourself. You, you know, I think in Hustle, you played Dan Patrick. Yes. You didn't in Blended. By the way. I'm an aficionado of your films. I, thank you. Know, you. That, there was a thank you. And, and the fact that you called them films and not movies, I, I respect that as well. And you know who carries the ball more than anybody? Adam Sandler. Adam Sandler. Absolutely, Commissioner. A absolutely. You know what? I'm going to get Sandler to do a PSA for the NBA on an anti-carrying program. Thank you. It could have a double meaning, by the way. Yeah, the John Morant anti-carrying. Absolutely. I got it, Commissioner. Hey, uh, I know you got a busy day. Thank you for uh, taking time. Thanks, Dan. That's uh, Adam Silver, NBA Commissioner.